All right, so I'm here uh, today with uh, Jenny Kell, who's a, a licensed occupational therapist and a, a therapeutic yoga specialist. So uh, welcome, Jenny. Hi, thank you. So tell us uh, about a little bit about who you work with and then uh, also the story of how you uh, started working with, uh, with your clients. Okay. Um, well, I think I would probably best begin telling how I ended up getting into yoga in the first place. As you said, I'm, I'm an occupational therapist and I had have that rehab background and I've worked in different settings, neuro rehab, um, spinal cord, worked in geriatrics. So lots of, you know, pretty well-rounded uh, background in occupational therapy. Uh, pretty early on in my career, I had a back injury. So I have a I always had trouble with my back. And then as I got older, like things happen whenever you get older, you know, everything gets better, right? <laughs> with age. <laughs> I mean, wine does cheese age as well, but right. we don't always tend to do that. And unless we really, really, really are conscious about taking care of our bodies. Uh, and, and I was just doing a lot of working, you know, I was doing a lot of lifting, you know, in rehab. Then I got into home health and I was doing a lot of driving. So I was doing a lot of sitting. I was doing a lot of like, uh, uh, really spreading myself thin in home care as you know, I know you have that background too. Mm -hmm. So we tend to be on a really, really tight schedule. So I would get up, run out the door, grab like some fast food. So I was gaining weight. I was getting, you know, squishy. <laughs> I was getting sedentary. And, um, so it, my body was really, really, uh, paying the price for that. And so, like I said, so I'm backing up, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I had a back injury in my first job in rehab. So I was transferring a patient who had a spinal cord injury and just, he had a seizure disorder as well. So during that transfer, he went into like full extension in mm. his body. So like his, he went backwards. I was holding him uh, by his belt, like around the waist. So for people who are listening, it's called a gate belt. And we put it around the person's waist and transfer them from one surface to the other. So I was transferring him from his wheelchair to the mat to do exercises. And then I just felt this kind of like weird pain in my lower back and it just felt warm. Mm. And then the next day it was like pain down my legs. So I had herniated my disc right. in my L4, L5. And so once you have a back injury, anybody that's, um, endured a back injury knows that it's something that stays with you for life. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I, I was already a little compromised because I have a condition where my spine just kind of over time twists and it's a congenital, you know, spinal malformation. I don't have an really, a an L5 as well. It's kind of fused into that, uh, the sacrum. Mm -hmm. So it twists and it's not comfortable. So I've always had, I kind of always had an achy back. Even when I was a teenager, I was a gymnast as a kid and as a teenager, but I always had like, I was always shifting around and was like uncomfortable in my desk and things like that. I have two scoliosis curves. So it just kind of, and as you get weaker and you get, um, you get older and then you start doing work that compromises the structures around your spine anyway, then it just tends to get worse. But I really didn't understand what was going on. So I just kind of went with the, with what my doctors said. They were like, you know, you need to, um, you know, be careful about like your lifting. You shouldn't be doing any lifting anymore. You should, um, be careful about like the kind of exercises that you do. You know, be careful with strength training if you don't know what you're doing. So it's all of this like kind of fear, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like I'm going to mess myself up royally and I'm in my twenties and you lift people for a living. Yeah. And yeah. this is what I went to school to do. Right. You know, like I have no other skills. Like what am I going to do? You know, so this was terrifying. I'm like, I'm just starting my career. So I really thought that getting out of rehab and doing home health care would be, you know, something that would be easier. And that's when I learned that sitting is like the worst enemy of mm -hmm. back pain <laughs> right. for neck and back pain, you know, sitting and driving and you know, just posturally what it does like to your pelvis and, you know, putting your arms and, and, and holding the steering wheel and looking down and, you know, at your phone, trying to figure out where you're going to go next and all this, all this kind of stuff is, it's just not, not, it's not good. So I, I did my career, like kind of shifted my career and I was like, and now I can't do this either. Mm -hmm. So I remember there was one time that I was going to, when you work for a home care company, you're kind of at their disposal, like wherever they need you is where they send you. So mm -hmm. you might be at that time I was 
going from Fort Worth. I was seeing somebody in Fort Worth, Meacham Field area in Rockwall, you know, on the same schedule and all the way up to like the border of Oklahoma in Texas. I was like, I had a huge area and I was on 635, um, about to go to another patient's house. I'm just in the pain going down my left leg, especially this, my sciatic nerve pain was so terrible. It felt like somebody was like pouring battery acid down my leg and it was so incredibly pain. It was the worst pain that I'd ever felt. So you're on one of the busiest freeways in yes, the city and of I Dallas pull over. and you pull over and, and the, those of you not familiar with 635, I mean, it is a mess. Yeah, it's a mess. Very, very hectic. Yes. And you get this pain in the middle of this yeah, and I probably have, in the middle of the day, right? Oh yeah. It's it horrible. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely horrible. So I pull over side of the road, 635. I go around <laughs> the other side of the car and I'm laying over the trunk of the car, like the back end of the car. And I'm just crying. And right. I, I call the office and I quit that day. And I was like, I have no idea what I'm going to do. And these are probably similar stories that you get with the current people you work with. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. And you just, you feel it's such a hopeless feeling. Mm. And so I really feel for people who are, um, going through that, but you know, I went through it at a very young age and I was in it. You can't really, um, separate the physical from the emotional aspects of that. Mm. You feel extremely hopeless. You feel like you you're looking around. I'm looking at people who are in their twenties. And then when I got into my thirties, it wasn't getting better. So, you know, it was getting worse Mm -hmm. because I really didn't know you know, I had gone, I went to PT. It wasn't helping. I did steroid injections. It didn't help. I had epidural injections. Didn't help. It would feel better for like a day or so. And then I'd be right back to where I was. So, um, I went to a spinal specialist, uh, orthopedist, um, here in Dallas at the Carroll clinic. And he was like, you know, the, uh, facet rhizotomy is what we're going to mm. do. And I that said, sounds well, scary. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah. And, uh, it, this, I think I was 29. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think it's 29 at the time. And so I was like, well, what if that, I go, so this is going to work. This is going to take care of my pain. And I was like, so what, what is it? And I was like, okay, so you're, we're cauterizing nerves and it may or not, may or may not work. Right. Yeah. I was like, so this is like kind of a diagnostic procedure. <laughs> I was like, I don't think, I don't think that's what I want to do. Right. And so I just, I didn't, I was terrified of the surgery and, you know, being in rehab yourself, you know, that we see the, the, the bad effects mm-hmm. a lot of times of back, of surgery, back surgery all the time. Yeah. So I'm sure there are plenty of, I know people that have had successful back surgeries, but the people that we work with are not those people. So, mm-hmm. and even the successful surgeries, sometimes it just seems like you're just left with these adverse effects because, you know, you're not taking care of the whole picture you know there you can't just fix the spine without addressing the fascia and the muscle around it and the compensatory mm-hmm. patterns of like movement and posture that go along with um years of having pain so i think a lot of people don't realize it's not just the you take an mri and there's the bulging disc or whatever's yeah. going on what really that's not what caused the the problem right the problem was the posture the movement Mm -hmm. weakness the weakness yeah the fact that if you're driving it puts your spine into a ball Mm -hmm. from the very top of your neck all the way down Mm -hmm. below your pelvis so almost your entire body yes and that's the way you're sitting when you're driving around all day Mm -hmm. and if you're not doing things on a regular basis to counteract that or if you're sitting all day very similar thing if you're not doing things to counteract that lying on your stomach or you know doing the opposite of what you're of what you're doing when you're sitting in a car or sitting all day then it that's how you herniate discs and it usually happens in younger people too Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because you have a ton of fluid between each vertebrae that allows us to have lots of shock absorption Mm -hmm. the problem is when you get the pressure when you're rounded forward all the time it pushes that fluid back mm-hmm. and that's when you get disc herniations and it happens to younger people yeah. usually more so than older people yes and, and the root cause of it's a posture and movement problem right exactly exactly and that's why i think um we're starting to see more issues uh in the higher segments like the um 
upper thoracics and right. the cervical vertebra because of posture because mm. young, younger people now have desk jobs they're in yeah. front of computers with really good posture you know <laughs> <laughs> as he sits up straight our producer is a stellar in the weight room so he's the, the posture is improving i can see yeah, it all the time good. good job anmar <laughs> <laughs> But like, yeah, it's just this like kind of hunching forward, looking at the computer or looking at our devices most of the day. And then, yeah. and I talk to you, you know, my friends who work from home and working from home is not any better because no. you know, they're in front of the computer all day long. And I'm like, okay, how many breaks do you take during the day? Mm-hmm. Maybe none. Like maybe they're sitting there for eight hours in a day. So you can imagine like what that does to your shoulders, what that does to your lower back, your spine. Just like you said, you can't separate the spine. It's everything is connected. Mm-hmm. And then whenever you look at like the nervous system and the the uh, nerves that come off of the neck and the and the back, you know, it's like, oh, OK, well, no wonder I have pain in my left big toe because of the way that I'm, you know, I'm sitting all day. So um I'm trying to figure, remember where I left off. So I was, oh, I was on 635 crying. Crying. And now you're trying <laughs> to figure out what, what yes, to do for a living. Yes, I was crying living. and quitting for, you know, my right. job. And going, and okay, what am I going to do? early 30s. Yes. So what, what am, am I going to do? for a living? Yes. Yes. And um, so I'm like, okay, well, I'll do um, orthopedics. I'll go into orthopedics. I'll go into, you know, hand rehab where it can be. I'm not having to lift. I had a good friend who's an orthopedic surgeon that I worked with at the rehab center and we had kept in touch and he had a private practice. And so he's like, come work for me in my office. But then what was I doing? I was sitting on a rolling chair all day long, on a rolling chair, looking down <laughs> people's thumbs and, you know, wrists. And so I'm like, Oh my God, now my neck is hurting. I'm like, okay, I can't do like my, my spine is not supporting. I, I, I can't do this. Like, what am I, what am I going to do? And the worst part the endless hours of documenting with yes. frustrating hospital system documentation yes. that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Yep. Mm-hmm. is not intuitive, is not clinically relevant. Right. Because just some third party reviewer wants to just be able to go check, 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 check. Okay, good. I'm not a healthcare provider, but I'm going to review all these notes anyway and make mm-hmm. major decisions that are make a big impact on people's lives. Yes. And I want the healthcare provider to do this just as easy for me as possible. Yeah. And then if I it's not as easy for me, then I'm going to complain about it to to their managers and then their managers will make sure that they just check the boxes for me. Yep. Exactly. That's the mm-hmm. scary part of what's happening in healthcare. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, also equally frustrating. I started, you know, I, I did find my way from that. So I stuck with that for a little bit. And then I ended up just having to um, go to a part time. You know, so position. what was the transition so, point? What did you do? So the transition point happened. Um, well, it kind of it actually happened to me in my mid 30s. I was still like just dealing with pain as like, OK, this is just my life. This is going to mm. be this is going to be my life. I'm, I'm, I have pain. So I, um, coped with it in the only way that I knew how to do it. Um, I would, you know, and I, and I did, I got regular massages and I was still going to PT. I tried chiropractic and, um, you know, different, different things. And some of those aspects of, um, of that part of self-care are still part of my regimen, you know, cause it is still something that I manage, but, um, but the, the, the key word is I'm, I know how to manage it and I'm right. so much better than I was like 15 years ago. So mid thirties, I kind of woke up one day and I was like, I have got to do something different because I can no longer, you know, the, this whole thing of antidepressants and pain medication and self-medicating, you know, drinking a vat of wine at night is not healthy, you know, for mm-hmm. me either. It might take away the pain for a little bit and like make me sleep. But then I'm like, this is not helping. The but liver doesn't lie. No, no, you can't. No, it does not. And uh, so I woke up and I was like, I'm just not going to do this anymore. I, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to do this. Right. So um, I went to, um, what is that gym? Equinox gym. Mm-hmm. And they had Pilates there. So I hired a personal Pilates instructor and I was like, I'm so jacked up. Mm-hmm. I am not going to be in this class on one of these reformers. I, I, I don't know. I am not strong enough to do this. I need somebody to like help me one-on-one because I knew that it wasn't going to work. You know, my rounds of PT, like three to four weeks of PT twice a week, just that, that was great at the time, but then it stops mm-hmm. and I, I need to do something. I need to continue to do something because I'm always going to have this spine that's going to need and this body that's going to need attention. 
So that actually really started to help. So she taught me, you know, more spinal stabilization, um, very small movements that were, Mm -hmm. that were, um, that I was working in a pain-free motion and I kind of core strength. I learned really, truly the importance of what, a, what a core is that it's not just like doing a bunch of like abdominal strengthening exercises, not just crunches. The stuff we were doing in the nineties. Right, 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 right. Yeah, exactly. Flexing the, the back forward over yes, and over yeah, and over, over again, over 500 again. times. Right, right. Shortening so, the front abdominal muscles that brings us forward even yes. more into a ball. Uh huh. So it was just that whole balance of strengthening stability yeah. and flexibility. And so then she didn't ask my permission, but she moved up north. And um, so I was like, oh, so rude. <laughs> she <laughs> and, had a great coach who was like, it's that one on one attention. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. And I will always remember her. Yes. She was so patient and yeah. um, she was so patient with me. And she was just really um, uh, just very dedicated to her work. Mm-hmm. And she was she was so good. She was actually she was a PTA. PT assistant mm-hmm. and she, but she enjoyed Pilates. So she made Pilates kind of like her thing. Right. And so then from that little springboard, so Pilates like kind of, um, pushed me into, I'm like, Oh, I want to do a little bit more on the flexibility side. Cause my back is tight. I'm mm-hmm. like so tight. My shoulders are so are rounded. I'm so tight. So I wanted to get more flexibility. So as a friend of mine, um, that was actually one day saw me get up from my couch in my apartment and I was like, Ugh, just like pushing up like a, like an old lady, like somebody that was 90 years old. And I'm like, like I said, 34, 33 or 40, 34 years old. And she's like, this is ridiculous. You know, she's like, <laughs> you know, you're, you're doing bodies, but you, you sit there. Cause like I would sit there for a while and then I was like the tin woman, I couldn't mm. move. So I was, even though I was getting better, she's like, come to yoga with me. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay. So I started out at Sunstone Yoga. So mm-hmm. that's a hot yoga, um, huge classroom. Mm-hmm. And even though, like I said, I had that rehab background, I was, I still have an ego. <laughs> you know? So I I'm like, I probably that. should not do this, but all these other people are doing all these, you know, great like beautiful like lunges and these beautiful warrior twos and all that. And like thinking, okay, I'm gonna do exactly what that you know, girl in front of me is doing. And so I'm like, Oh my God, like, this is not, (laughs) I can't do this. And so half of the class was spent like laying on the floor, the, you know, I would do a little bit. And I, so I could maybe make it through like a third or half of the class. And then at the end of the class, I remember one time I was just like laying there crying and it was mostly like a defeat and Mm. then going, okay, there's, there's something about this practice that is good for me, Mm -hmm. but I have to find you know, where that is. And I understand um, it was quite painful yes. as well. Yeah. Like when you first started, when I first started, Oh yeah. It, like it, that, how much of the tears was defeat and how much of it was physical it was, pain? It was a good, like half and half. half, and half yeah. <laughs> it was a good half and half. And it's not always about the physical pain too, no. right? Because it's, it's the emotional pain that goes. Yes. With it. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, um, so I was like, okay, these, these bigger classes are again, it's mm. not going to be for me. So I found, um, I found a yoga specialist, a scoliosis specialist, mm. and she. I, so I would drive to um, from Dallas to Arlington to work with her, mm-hmm. and and she was a yoga therapist, and she worked with people out of her lovely home. She had it was very calming. She had mats down. She had um, props and bolsters and straps. Like I'm gonna, you know. Um, Show you a little bit later. I'm going to make you do some make things, Jeffrey. Do some things. <laughs> yeah. Take the meathead in the, who wants to be in the weight room all the time. And yes. Got, I guess we should turn the heat up in here because I do prefer hot yoga. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess we can't do that. Yeah, no. Um, so from there, then I just, I found also smaller um, classes that were more rooted in um, the traditional mm-hmm. um, yoga principles. So that being um, self-care practicing kindness and compassion to Mm. yourself and to others. So people think of yoga as just like the postures, but it's actually, you know, there's a lot of principles that go along with it. You know, like what you put into your body, um, uh, gratitude and, and being like being very patient with yourself Mm. and not putting yourself in compromising situations, like stopping the whole, you're recognizing the ego when it's starting to take over and go like Mm. my practice doesn't have to look like the person's next to me. And so learning how to just keep your attention on your little rectangle on your little mat and like what it feels like. And, um, and really listening to your, and listening to your body and going, Oh, okay. You know, this hurts. So maybe I should stop. (laughs) 
mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, or um, this, I can go a little, I can, I can go a little bit deeper in this learning also um, uh, Hatha, which is a breath based practice. So learning to control your breathing and using that in conjunction with the postures teaches you to like when you can let go and when you can go a little bit further and when you need to back off. And so it's really, you know, nobody can do that for you. You know, Mm -hmm. you have, that's something that has to be taught. So this is, this is how I got into the, the healing process for myself. Um, I was very patient and that was very hard because I'm not by nature, somebody that's, um, patient with myself. Mm -hmm. I'm very, I'm driven. And so I wanted to get better and I wanted to get better yesterday. Right. And so I had to put that aside and I have to say, okay, I can, I can only do what I can do today. Tomorrow's another day, but I can only do what I can do right now. Mm -hmm. And so I was going very religiously, you know, four times a week. Um, and I worked with a, uh, a yoga teacher and this, this place was called Tissada yoga. And the, um, teacher, his name is Chinook. He's still Mm -hmm. teaching at, um, I believe he teaches at the J and then there's some other places that he teaches, but he had been a a professional football player and he had a really bad back injury. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So sometimes he would just teach from a chair. Right. You know, because he would, he was staying in shape, but he was like the one who really understood, Mm -hmm. you know, that I may continue to have injuries to my back. I might have flare ups and he would, you Mm -hmm. know, that, that would happen. And so he just kind of became my, my teacher. Like I can relate to you. I can connect to this. I get this. Mm -hmm. Right. So before and after class, he would just be a source of encouragement for me. And he really focused on, on me and tried to, to help me correct, um, my posture and made like more aware of what I was doing throughout the day too. And so the more that you practice and the more that you are in tune with your body, the more that you can start recognizing, you know, what it is that you're doing that might be compromising your, um, physical health. And I guess that can be some of the barriers to yoga when people are looking to get into it. They Mm -hmm. see the, you know, it's for lack of a better term, a, a yogi who's, you know, someone who's been doing this yeah. for a long time yes. and they're super bendable and they mm-hmm. can do all these crazy things. And it's such a far reach yes. for the general it's public. So unattainable for even so if, many people, even if they're physically active, mm-hmm. yeah. myself included. Yeah. So it's, what's the point? But then the point becomes, it's not about being able to bend like that. No. Or is it even healthy to bend like that? And Instagram does not help. Uh, I'm sure it doesn't. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't like, know. <laughs> it's so, yeah, social media doesn't help because it does. It shows these like gorgeous, you know, mm. postures and stuff of put, somebody putting their you know foot behind their head and all that. Not, not that there's anything wrong with it, somebody that can do that. That's great. I like look at that and go, man, it must be amazing. It must feel so good to have that kind of flexibility in your back, which I'm not going to have that, right. but that's okay. You don't need you know, it. I don't need that. Because, you know, after a while I was like, oh my gosh, things are not, things are not hurting anymore Mm -hmm. that used to hurt. I don't, I'm, I'm able to get from this low surface, like squishy couch and not have to use both of my hands to push myself up. Like, you Mm -hmm. know, the 90, 90 year old woman I was at, you know, 34 years old, you know, 34 year old trapped in 97 year old's body. And I I work with some 97 year olds Mm -hmm. that actually look better than I did at 34. (laughs) (laughs) So, it was sad, sad, but true, true story. Um, yeah. So it was like these little daily living tasks Mm -hmm. that were getting easier. And one of the first things that I noticed that was getting easier was, and this is going to sound weird, but I was more comfortable when I was getting a massage. Mm -hmm. I know you're looking at me like what, (laughs) but I could not, my back was so bad that I could not comfortably lay on my back or, and I could not lay on my stomach. So I could not lie. Mm. If I lay on my back without, you know, several cushions under my knees, flattening my back out, it would go into like a muscle spasm. That's a very bad position to be in Yeah, when you can't do either one. I can't do either. Yeah, Yeah. I could not do either one. And like on my back, forget it. You know, it was just, it was so bad. So I had to get a massage from my uh, massage therapist who I still work with, um, side lying, you know, so he would have to work with me on my side and the only way that I could be comfortable. So it'd be like an hour and a half, two hours, once a week mm-hmm. at least. And it'd work with me on my side or me on my other side. And then my, um, first husband, I was, I've 
um, with my second husband now. So my second husband, my second husband, my current husband, my current husband, current husband. <laughs> husband number two. Um, so the husband number two has seen me like the transformation, ah. you know, but, um, husband one, we were great, you know, great friends and all that. But you know, the marriage didn't work out partially because of my pain. Right. You know, he was really active. I was super depressed. Um, I couldn't do the things that he was doing. I felt like I was being, you know, unfair. It really kind of, um, contributed to the failure of my first marriage. So it's a, it was, it's a lot dealing with chronic pain. And we see that all the time with mm-hmm. our clients, whether it's a chronic pain issue or yeah. a mobility issue, the, the effect that has on families, oh. the effect that it has on people's relationships yes. it's uh, terrible. with their children, with mm-hmm. whoever. And we see that yeah. pretty much every day. In fact, we're with our clients, we're working with them and their families often yeah. and trying to help empower making sense of all of it, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So that the, at least the, with more understanding and more education, um, more family members knows what's go- know what's going on. Yeah. At least grasp it. Right. If they can't truly feel it, they can at least, okay, I, I get that now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you do that with your clients as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So early on before I've, you know, found yoga, I was in my side lying position getting my massage, but so it'd be like, you know, this 90 minute to two hour massage. And then my, um, my then husband would help me into a hot bathtub where I would lay for like 30, 45 minutes and then I could go to bed. So, and these are common stories I'm sure you hear about all the time with uh people. And so now you're able to say, yep, been there. I remember that. Yeah. Uh Uh Uh-huh. I remember that. And so it wasn't, you know, it was definitely not an overnight thing. I started noticing that I could um, lay on my stomach and I could get a massage for like 30 minutes wow. without any back spasms. <laughs> I could lay on my back and um, and Robert could work on my neck mm-hmm. without, you know, I would only have like one cushion or, you know, something like that. And it, I, I could sit, you know, I could sit without pain. I could stand without, you know, pain going down my leg or I could sit without pain going down my leg. I would, could sit, you know, stand for longer periods without like the just really aching, throbbing pain in like my lower back. So something was happening, um, you know, within me, uh, on a psychological, emotional level too. So I was like, the more that I was, I was seeing that this was working, Mm -hmm. the more I wanted to do it, Mm -hmm. you know, and the more confidence that I had in my body because I was told by doctors, oh, no, yoga is not appropriate for you. And and I hear hmm. that with a lot of my clients. They're like, and, and it's so sad. You know, I really, I hate that because I've lost several clients because they'll go to their doctors and they'll mm-hmm. say, oh, I'm taking this yoga class. And they'll be like, oh, no, you need to stop doing that. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not the yoga class that I went to. I'm not uh, uh, teaching a class of 60 people in a hot yoga setting with, you know, crazy positions. I'm teaching therapeutic type type of yoga. And it's such a huge blanket, you know, term. There's so many different styles of yoga. There's so many different um, ways that different teachers teach that you can't say that is bad. That's like saying, you know, walking is, you should just not walk. (laughs) It's just like, there's, you know, there's, different types of ambulation. We can't just say there, you just shouldn't walk or, you know, that's, it's, that's just, Oh, it drives me crazy. Cause we could go um, into like a whole 30 minute spiel about the negative effects of walking on the body because of the repetitive, the repetitive and everything yes. else. Uh-huh, but By the way, you, walking is great. Normally. Yeah, so, yeah, so, <laughs> so don't, don't stop walk, walking, but you get the idea, right? So it's like, everything can have a secondary effect Yes, and it's about getting a balance of these things. Mm So yoga is, you know, often a great way, especially for, you know, when I, when I was doing, um, personal training, Mm -hmm. you know, for triathletes or marathon runners and things like that, like I would encourage them, you know, get into the, into Mm -hmm. do yoga once a week. Yeah, It's a great counterbalance to all the repetitive things you're doing. If you're not going to do uh, uh, corrective exercises on a daily mm-hmm. basis, at least get yourself into a yoga class once yes. or twice a week yeah. and counter what you're doing with all the running. The running is great. It's mm-hmm. great for your body. It's great for your cardiovascular system, but you have to counter it. And the weight room is a great place to do it. Yeah. And that's where, where I came in and I would give the corrective exercises. And if they wouldn't do the, the corrective exercises, yoga was a great way for them to just go show up in a room mm-hmm. and counter what they're doing when they're running and cycling and doing all those other things yes, or whatever they're doing in their life. If they're sitting at a desk all day and working, right. okay, good. Go to a yoga class. Yeah. That's a great way to do it. Cause yeah. not, er- not everybody wants to do corrective exercises. No, but I mean, like I was even really bad about that because I knew that they, they helped, but I'm like, Oh, 
you know, self-discipline is, is a, is a skill. Right. <laughs> But if you're, if you are like, I'm making this appointment, this is on my calendar. I've got this class there at this go. time, this, you know, then that's yoga is a great option for it's people. A great option. Some yeah. people are group exercise people yeah, and some, some are, are not. not. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm not one of those group exercise people, yeah. but on the important thing is to understand that a lot of people are, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then it's like, what are the best, what's the best group exercise right. for them or what combination of group exercise classes? Yeah. If you're going to do body pump one day, then you might want to consider the other days mm-hmm. of doing, um, uh, yoga or Pilates mm-hmm. or, uh, whatever else it might right. be. Cause right. you don't want to do body pump every day because no. you're going to quickly or spin get injured. class every day. Or spin like, class yeah. every day. Yeah. yeah. So it's all about a balance of all these different types of things yeah. with exercise or rehab for that matter. Oh yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, um, like I was saying, as I was getting stronger, I started like getting into more strength training. And then I was, I was balancing, like you were saying, balancing strength and flexibility. And so that really became like the sweet spot, you know, really mm-hmm. for me was, um, getting in the gym, doing some, you know, doing resistance training with yoga. And so that just really became, um, that's when I started seeing that transformation, you know, in my, in my body, the way that I felt in my, in this vessel, (laughs) you know, in my skin. So it was really, um, really interesting. So this is, I've been practicing now for, let's see, I started in 2000, uh, you know, I think I've been practicing now for about 14 years. So. And so how did you get into, uh, what you're doing now with your clients and Um, how, and tell us about your clients and what have they achieved and what, what does that, What's that like? So once I started noticing, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So it was like, wow, I wish that I had discovered yoga and realized that how many benefits that there were to yoga, um, before I went to therapy school or Mm -hmm. as a young therapist, then I could have helped myself earlier and I could have really incorporated these principles in with my, um, rehab and rehab treatment. And I think that's where, you know, that the whole Eastern Western fusion kind of comes in that Mm -hmm. globally, like it, you know, by mind, body, spirit thing. And so 2013 was when I started yoga teacher training Mm -hmm. and it was, um, Ben and I had just gotten married or no, we were getting married in 2013. That's my, um, my current husband. <laughs> I think I'm keeping him by the way. Oh, that's good. Okay, yeah. I think this one's going to stick. <laughs> so, so 2013 was a big year for me. I decided going to, to go to teacher training and we got married and uh, we were sitting outside on our balcony in the, our apartment downtown. And, um, I said, you know what? I think I want to do, I want to learn to teach yoga because, and I want to do this for people who, you know, have, gone through things like I've gone through that are going through, you know, depression, anxiety, chronic pain. And I really feel like it, it, at that time I was, I was working in outpatient. So I was noticing that we had frequent flyers. We had, you know, people that would mm-hmm. you know go home, you know, out, and they would go to outpatient for a little bit and then they would fall or whatever, because they're not doing their exercises anymore. They're not continuing, like you said, your, their corrective exercises and they would come back. Have back pain. Had and, back you know, pain and they were back for something come else. Come back again and again. Or yep. they would fall and they would have a fracture. So we'd see them for a wrist fracture, you know, after they had you know, rehabilitated their broken hip, you know. And so it was just one thing after another. And I said, you know, there's, there's got to be some sort of reason why we're seeing this. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as a PT, this is what we typically do is like, okay, well, I'll continue your exercises. And when we know that they're about to discharge or their insurance is not going to pay anymore. You know, then um, we give them the little handout, you know, of pictorial HEP, the home exercise program that, you know, gets put in a drawer once they get home and they nine times out of 10 probably don't do it. You with know, five pages of exercises on it with 20 exercises. different exercises. Yes. Yep. Three sets of 10, uh-huh. you know, like all that. It's just not. And, and I'm thinking there's got to be some way to like bridge that gap mm-hmm. between discharge from therapy and community re-entry mm. or being feeling safe. And I knew that from, from my experience, I just didn't feel safe. I didn't know what to do when I would go to go to the gym. I'm like, I don't, I don't know what to do, you know, in a gym. I don't know how to do all these yoga poses. I can't just go to this class. It's very, it's extremely intimidating. Mm. So if you've not, 
if you I mean, I think for anybody who's never done yoga, but somebody, especially somebody who's never practiced yoga and has a chronic pain, you know, situation, Mm -hmm. it's extremely intimidating to go into these big classes and see all these like this breathing and movement and you want to be able to do that, but you can't. And you're like, oh, but the class is too big. And so I can't really ask. I can't raise my hand and go, how do I do that warrior one correctly? You know, is my foot in the right position? You know, you can't do that. So I wanted to be that person to um, help people get their confidence back Mm -hmm. and learn how to be more in tune with their body. Like I wanted to be that source, I guess, of inspiration Mm -hmm. for people. Like you can, if I can get better, you can get better too. And so that's, that's kind of where I am right now. So it just kind of grew organically. I finished, um, teacher training and, uh, I just kind of came up with my own little fusion of rehab, the, and yoga and Pilates and strength training and postural correction. Mm -hmm. I talk about that. I'm sure that my clients will agree. The ones that are regulars in my classes, they're like, I talk about posture all the time. (laughs) And, and I love anatomy, you know, I'm like an anatomy nerd anyway. So I'm like, but especially when you see like how it all kind of works together and Mm -hmm. how it can really, really change. It can, it, it, this, it, it can really change your life for the good or the bad. Right. Oh, posture you know, can yes. mean everything, right? Yes, yep. posture can mean everything. What you do with your body can mean everything. And so, yeah, so I'm I'm really trying to, and I think that's actually, um, and I will say I've got some male clients. I have some female clients. My female clients especially, uh, this is something that, that just popped in my head. My The female clients don't want that f- like rounded posture. Mm -hmm. They don't want that hunched over look. They're like, I don't want to look like an old lady. They'll always say, I don't want to look like an old lady. Help me. Like, how do I get my shoulders back? How do I improve my posture? That's like the number one thing. Um, for men, they want to improve, improve their flexibility, Mm -hmm. but it usually, they usually come to me when they realize they can't get up off of the floor. Isn't that interesting? It's the it's what's truly limiting their life, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's, we know that we have tight hamstrings or whatever. We were yes. talking about this bef- uh-huh. uh, uh, before we started this interview. Uh, the um, Why do men have tend to have tight hamstrings? Right. And we see this all the time. We just still don't have a, uh, I don't know what, if, if anybody knows, has any good theories, I'd love to hear it. So, yeah. but um, we see it all the time yeah. and, you know, and you, you have it when you're in your teens and twenties, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's a problem all throughout your life. Yeah. At what point do you really take action on it? Right. And then other things get tight around you as well. Mm-hmm. And you want to stretch, but it's not, it's not as much fun as the weight room or it's not fun as going right. out and running. Yeah, yeah especially exactly. If, especially if you're a guy. Yeah, it uh, is. It's not know. exactly because we're earlier when we were talking about guys tend to want to power through stuff, right? You know, they want to muscle their way to muscle my way to health. Yes. <laughs> oh, lifting is much more fun yeah, than yeah, stretching. Uh-huh, yeah. But at <laughs> what point does the, um, does the lack of flexibility become an issue in your life to where it's actually limiting you from living your life? Yeah. Your function. Yes. Like functional movement to be able to stand up from the ground, mm-hmm. to be able to, you know, to be able to bend down and pick something up and actually have the motion to be able to yeah. do that. So here's a funny story. So one of my clients, he's, he's been working with me now for about three years just one of my favorite clients to work with so stiff. He's had back surgery, shoulder surgery. So he's already kind of been there. You mm-hmm. know, he's had the um, lower back fusions and it was after, after his surgery and after the fusions, after the rehab and all that. And he's, um, he's got a nice little place in Port Aransas and his grandkids come out and they go fishing and things like that. And they were fishing off of the pier and this is such a guy story. I, I like, I love it. And, uh, so this is how he ended up Googling me and like, um, Googled corrective exercise or therapeutic yoga and stuff. He was like, this is what I need to do. He realized that he could not get up off of that pier. Like mm-hmm. his grandkid was, or grandson was like, Oh, I'm going to go, you know, get up and go, Oh, there's mom and dad or something. And I'm going to go run after them. He's like, come on, grandpa. And he was like, Oh my God, I can't get up. Hmm. And so your know, little boy wants to help him, but he can't help him up because he's a little boy. And so, you know, my client looks around and he's like, who is going to get me up? And mm-hmm. so he had to send his grandson to go get his son to help him up off of 
the pier. And this is where it gets kind of funny. He was like, and I was so embarrassed. And I, and I was like, well, well, you know, why are you embarrassed? This is your family. He goes, no, because there was a really pretty girl that was walking by. <laughs> and she saw me struggling there. And I, he goes, I vowed there, there. And then I was never going to look like an idiot in front of a pretty woman ever again. We never change, <laughs> like, do we? Right. No. People He's don't like change. 70 something years old. People don't change. No, no, absolutely not. He goes, in my mind, I'm still 30. So, you know, like it was just so embarrassing for him to, you know, so I was like, okay, so was it like functionally that you couldn't get up or that was it the woman? He goes, woman first, the woman the first. Woman first. <laughs> so, and, and the funny part is, you know, we, we want to think that health is important, right? Yeah. Like if health wasn't, was truly motivating enough to be that important we would all be healthy, yeah. right? Because we know, we all know how important health mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. in reality. We know that that's not what gets 99.9% of people yeah. moving and actually yeah. making real changes. Mm-hmm. Not even the, wow, I can't get up anymore yeah. because I'm so inflexible. Yes. Not the, like my son has to help me up. Right. Not even maybe what if I'm with my grandson alone and I can't get up and can I, Yeah. do I put him at risk? Uh huh. No, it's the woman. It's the that woman. Is the woman. It's the, it's so like, what really drives us? <laughs> yeah, and it's like, what is the driving force? This is the human component, but this yeah. is reality. Uh-huh, so right. uh, we, we can't uh, fake ourselves into believing that health and wellness is what drives people because no, it isn't. I mean, it's the aesthetics. It's, it's the ego. It's absolutely. all these other things. Mm-hmm. And we have to tap into that as if well. If it was only health, we would not see half the number of cardiovascular diseases right. that we see, right? right? <laughs> um, it would, we would not, we would all be eating right. We would all be like not doing detrimental things to our health if it was all just about, you know, health, but no, that's, it's that ego, <laughs> right? We're so, all predictably irrational, yes. myself included. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We don't make rational decisions right. the vast majority of the time. Yeah. So this is where, you know, like, um, it just, my uh, goal is just to help people age in a healthy, change the way people age. We can't, we can't change aging. Like I was saying, you know, one day I had perfect vision. The next day I woke up and I couldn't see a thing. Um, sorry, Jeffrey, it will probably it happen, will to, happen you. to me. Don't <laughs> tell me that I'm still too. invincible. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, that aging is something that's going to happen to us all that mm-hmm. we can't escape that. None of us are going to get out alive. We're all going to like, you know, have we all have an expiration we will date, all die. but yes, yes. But what are we going to do with the remaining years that yeah. we have, and how are we going to live it? And so, yeah. what are your clients uh, when they come to you? What are they like, and then what's a, what's their transition like? Mm-hmm. Um, so, a lot of them have gone through um, surgeries. A mm-hmm. lot of them have um, just you know tried the therapy thing, and it didn't either. It didn't work, or it wasn't like the right you know, the right fit. And they, you know, got disillusioned with therapy for one reason or another. And I get it. I was a therapist. I was in that. I understand disillusionment because, you know, like you were talking about our healthcare system, the way that it is and insurance and all that and how we don't really tend to focus on the whole person. Mm -hmm. And so some of them are are that some of them are just, you know, I'm retired now. What am I going to do with myself? You know, I want to, now that I'm retired, I want to, you know, I want to travel more. And so I know I'm going to have to like be able to walk longer distances or I have this pain or it's like, you know, like I was telling you before posture, you know, I, I, I caught myself in the mirror and mm. I'm hunched over and I don't want to look like that. You know, so again, back to the, what do I look like? So a picture know? of themselves mm-hmm. like, oh um, I look like that now. Yeah. Like yeah. I didn't know that I had gained so much weight. So sometimes right. it's a weight management thing. Sometimes it's, um, Sometimes it's pain. I'm getting a lot more um, uh, people finding me who are younger because they're getting migraine headaches because of Mm. looking at a computer screen all day long. And they have like really bad um, pain in their neck and in their hands are getting repetitive strain injuries like, you know, um, like carpal tunnel and all that, which, you know, that can often come from posture you know, right. and from the neck. And so, you know, it is, I, th- that's something I'm very passionate about. So I don't, as much as I love, I do love working with older people, but I think the earlier that we can mm. start working with people and in, in their twenties, in their thirties and start teaching them about that balance mm-hmm. and awareness, um, the less injuries we're going to see. Right. And we do it. So 
well, I'll sometimes tell my clients, they'll, they'll ask me, how long do I have to do these exercises? Whatever, <laughs> yeah. right? And I'll tell them about my shoulder injury from when I was 18 to 21 yeah. years old uh-huh. and the corrective exercise I still have to do as mm-hmm. a result. Mm-hmm. I'll also talk about how, so I, because of what I do, not because I'm a uh, forward thinking person by any means, you know, I started doing corrective exercises when I was 22. Yeah. Mostly because this is just what I do for a living. This mm-hmm. is what I nerd out about. This is what I'm mm-hmm. passionate about. This is what I love. Now, get me to do whatever for technology and forward think on that. Not going to happen. No, right. Neither. So mm-hmm. there's, there's other You're things. usually one or the other. You're not both. Exactly. <laughs> That's why we need people like your assistant here. <laughs> right. The, our, our producer's uh, great at that. So yeah, he yeah. Uh, tried to get me to forward think on technology. So he, he's like, by the way, it, this is going to happen if you don't do this or our website uh, right. developers. And you're like, and this is what's going to happen if you don't stretch your hamstrings. Exactly. <laughs> so corrective exercise since I was 22, I don't get random injuries. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, because of corrective exercises yes. consistently over time. Yes. Now I'm going to end up with some other problems somewhere else in my life because of something I'm not doing pr- proactively. It's your vision. It's my vision. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be, it'll be something else. <laughs> But, and so this, this is, this can be done starting Mm -hmm. at an early age. Yes. We start in our twenties and thirties, basic things. Just when we go into the gym, Mm -hmm. spot what the movement problem is, what is most likely to cause a major issue later in life. Yeah. Um, and then start correcting that now, make a major impact or just think about what types of things you do in your life that you know are likely to cause a problem. Mm -hmm. If you're sitting all day long in front of a computer, a computer, you know, then, okay, you might need to go to a yoga class. You not, right. might need to uh, go to Pilates. Mm-hmm. You might need to just lie on your stomach and go up on your elbows and put and bend your back backwards. Yeah, yeah. On a whatever regular basis, you don't multiple do, times a day. Yeah, whatever you don't do throughout the day, do it at the end of your day or, you know, throughout or before you start your day. Before like you, start you know your day. you're going to be sitting, you know, stretch your hip flexors or, you know, stretch your the front body if you're going to be sitting and, um, you know, it's counter what the, whatever posture Correct. you're doing most of the day. The example I'll sometimes give. So, um, I'll be giving my kids a bath, right. Especially mm-hmm. when, when my, um, when our daughter was a toddler and our son was a baby and mm-hmm. I had to be bent over the tub the entire time to yeah. help, you know, so he doesn't fall and hit his head in the bathtub. Uh-huh. So I'd be bent over and I'm in my, you know, I'm in my mid thirties, mm-hmm. right. Again, lots of fluid between the vertebrae to be able to be pushed back mm-hmm. if I'm, and I'm bent and twisted. And you stand up and you can, can't even stand up because you've, you've been bent over in that position yeah. for 20, 30 minutes. So then what I would always, the solution, I'm telling the story so that people know, have ideas of what they can start doing is mm-hmm. go on your stomach and then up on your elbows. Mm-hmm. And then start if you there. can yeah. without pain or, you know, just a little bit, you know, hurt so good pain or whatever it might be, then it's going up on the hands. Mm-hmm. Just that progression to yeah. bend the back in the opposite S- direction. Sphinx pose to seal pose. Is that what that's called? Yeah. Okay, yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> so you go the opposite yeah. uh, p- uh, direction that you've been in for incorrectly for a period of time. Mm-hmm. And so bending forward and rotating, of course, is the worst. Right. You know, dentists and surgeons mm-hmm. and all, you know, are are the more most prone. Yeah. If we're sitting at a computer all day, then it's getting on your stomach throughout mm-hmm. the day, preferably bending backwards, getting up on your elbows, getting on your hands yeah. and then doing stretching on a regular basis, going to yoga or just walking. Cause walking bends mm-hmm. our spine mm-hmm. in that backwards direction. Not as yeah. extreme as when we're on our elbows on our stomach, but walking helps bend the spine right. backwards. And so it's a great way to counter forward, that. backward movement. You're getting that, um, lengthening through the hip flexors and you're getting like, yeah, you're getting, um, movements in all directions. So tell us some more, more story about your, about your, um, the people you work with, what, uh, what are, tell us a story about how someone came in and then kind of their journey throughout your work with them. Mm -hmm. And then what were they able to get back to doing? Um, so I started a gentle yoga. Mm -hmm. I would, I, I actually started it. I, started a, um, yoga for seniors. And then I realized that it's not just seniors that need Mm. this corrective yoga. (laughs) It's the young people. And so I changed it to gentle yoga, Mm -hmm. you know, so people understand that 
they're not going to, they don't care, you know, that I'm an occupational therapist. They don't care about my, the initials behind my name, no. but they say, Oh, gentle yoga. I can probably do that. Is it, and people would call me, is it like stretching? I'm like, yeah, it's a little combination of some strengthening stabilization. We touch on balance. So, and they're like, yes, you know, balance is a big thing for people. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, even younger people are like, Oh my gosh, I didn't realize how bad my balance is or like I'm so strong on my right leg but my left leg is awful or you know it's just so there's the asymmetry um so general yoga is something I started at a um, studio in northwest Dallas that's um uh was called twist it's now called good vibes yoga which Mm -hmm. I teach out of now um four classes no five classes a week and it's a great little studio um it's brand new very excited about uh, being there but um yeah, so these people would come in, like I said, either because they were they knew that they need needed some kind of movement because they weren't getting it, mm-hmm. but they knew that they couldn't go into high intensity, you know, vinyasa flow class, yoga class, or hot yoga or Bikram yoga or any of the Bikram was really big for a while, and um, these postures were very very physically challenging. They knew that they couldn't do that. Yeah, but that sounds to, intimidating. It's yeah, it, it is. I don't yeah. want to go into those classes. I don't blame you. No. <laughs> I've been practicing a long time and I don't want to go to those classes most of the time. So, so, you know, they would give them to me because it seemed like it was attainable. It's, right. It seemed like something they could do. So I would always, I would offer modifications and they were, the classes were smaller. They were more intimate and people, they, they kind of formed this camaraderie, mm-hmm. you know, and they, in this accountability, I didn't even have to say, Oh, you know, um, Sue, are you going to show up, you know, next week to class? No, because, you know, they were all like saying, oh yeah, Sue, I'll see you next week. And then if they, if she did not show up, then she was going to get a call from three other people going, where were you? You know? And so they started holding each other accountable and they started seeing, they were growing, you know, um, exponentially it wouldn't like their flexibility and their strength and things like that. And I'm like, had the same little group. And then a year later I was like, Oh my gosh, this is so cool. From my standpoint, you guys were struggling to get off the floor, you know, right. a year ago. And now it's like no big deal. We're getting up and down multiple times during class. Um, one lady who did, did, um, have a, when she did work with me, she's since moved away, but she, um, had a, I think she was an accountant CPA. So she worked from home and she said when her, um, modem would go out or something would go out modem. Is that the right word? <laughs> <laughs> Do those things go out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the thing you had to get on the floor and like fix it or something. Yeah. I don't know. You know, this here's yeah. yeah. Router. There you go. Router. <laughs> You do one or the other. Right. Technology is not you my. You study humans or technology. Mm, yep. Technology is not my bag. So she's like, yeah, I would get down and, and, and I would get under the desk and I would have to restart my router. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good job. <laughs> she's, good job. And she's like, and now I can get up and down from the floor and I, I don't have any trouble anymore. And she goes, before I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have to do this. And how am I going to get up? Or it's going to be a struggle to get up or it's going to hurt my knees. It's going to hurt my back if mm-hmm. I, to try to get up. And so that was one big thing. And, um, another lady, she's still very dear, near and dear to my heart. She's been, um, she passed away a year ago, Thanksgiving. Um, but she was at that time, she was my oldest client that I'd seen. She was 87 when she Mm -hmm. came to me and her goal was to get up and down from the floor without help and without using furniture. Mm -hmm. And she, um, was still very lively. She had a lot of, um, life in her and she wanted to still like, go and travel her grandson or great grandson. Yeah. Her grandson lived in New York and she wanted to go see him in, in the city and, you know, things like that. She had, um, lots of goals, mm-hmm. you know, and she was still going to her, um, silver sneakers class, but it was, you know, they would just sit in a chair and they would do strengthening, you know, and sometimes they would get up and move, but this is different. This is, mm-hmm. you know, yoga is really functional movement. Mm-hmm. So you're going to do, put your body into lots of different positions. So it you was really need just, to be doing in, that's necessary for daily life yes. right? in order to, in order to make a trip to Manhattan and be able to, right. do, you know, when you're not 25 anymore, right, when, right. You're, when you're getting to your eighties. Mm-hmm. So it was just neat to see like all of the, the ladies, the other, um, students, uh, rallying around her and just giving her the support that she needed. And, um, and she did that. She accomplished her goal and was able to, yeah, she was able to get up and, you know, so it was, it was good. I, I feel like that extended 
you know, the last years of her life. And mm-hmm. then, she, then as she got older, she had a, also had a cardiac issue. So, um, she could no longer come to class, but I would still go to her house. Mm-hmm. And so she still worked with me and, um, and we continued that relationship until, um, she went on to, you know, her next chapter. <laughs> so that's massively impactful. So it's not just like, you know, one-on-one it's you kind of had a community, a tribe yeah. of people who were progressing together, yeah. holding each other accountable, reaching out to each other. Maybe if, if they were concerned, mm-hmm. well, are, are you okay? Why didn't you show mm-hmm. up to, to yoga, et cetera? Yeah. Is everything all right? Um, and so, and, yeah. and I've seen that, um, I used to teach, uh, Pilates in the water. Uh huh. Oh, cool. It was a very similar type of concept where you would have a community of people who are then reaching out to each other. Mm-hmm. Like, is so-and-so okay? Yeah. You know, why aren't they here? Right. And that's what I see now. I'm like, if somebody is hurt or injured, then they will say, okay, do we need to take food to her? Or mm-hmm. they'll, you know, send flowers and get money together for like a plant to be delivered in a, or in a nice card or yeah, you know, whatever. So it's just, it's, it's great to see that and to um, be able to facilitate that. And so then they're all progressing together mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they're able to, uh, you know, you know, what motivates people sometimes mm-hmm. is just other people yes. or seeing other people, yeah. uh, seeing examples of people achieving things. Yeah. And so that can be, uh, impactful as well as, um, you know, it's that, it's that community. It's like, okay, this person can do it. Okay. I can do it too. Yeah. It's that, it's that reward of, okay, I, I can do this. Yeah. This is achievable. I mean, I think what I love the most is, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm very, I'm a very safe teacher also. Mm-hmm. So I want to make sure that nobody is getting hurt on my watch. You right. Know? So with some people I'm thinking, oh, you know, maybe you should kind of ease back into after injury or something, they're coming back. I'm like maybe you need to kind of ease back into the mat classes, come to the chair yoga classes. And there's one lady in particular, she's around 80 years old. And, but she's like an 80 year old and a 30 year old's body <laughs> or like, yeah, she's, yeah. I mean, she's just so active and she's still so full of life that I forget her chronological age. Right. You know, like I forget that. And um, I'm thinking, oh, well, you know, she's like 50 something and like, no, no, she's 80, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, but she's just so spunky. It's like, mm, no, if I, you know, if I just, if I go back into the chair class, I'm just not going to push myself enough. Mm. And so sometimes they just, they decide that and they're I'm like, well, in my professional opinion, she goes, mm, yeah, but no, <laughs> I can it. do this. And like, and all, almost always they're like, okay, well you surprised me. Right. And this Why particular, yeah, exactly. So this lady also has, um, pretty significant, um, arthritis in her knees and her knees would you know, the sound that I'm talking about, mm, the, mm-hmm. crunching sound. the crunching sound. And it's so cool because I, I used to, she was like, Oh, my knees are singing. My knees are singing. And I'm <laughs> oh, like, I like oh. that. That's a good She's way like, to put oh, it. They're singing today. And I'm like, you know what? I don't hear your knees sing wow. hardly at all anymore. So sometimes, you know, I'll go over and I'll fix, you know, adjust a little bit here and there. But I used to like every single little movement that I would hear the singing knees and then it singing knees. the singing I knees. That. I know because it kind of gives a little positive spin right. on arthritis. <laughs> so like you know, it's just like yeah, they don't they don't make that noise anymore. So I mean, you can a lot can be changed. You, you think of change. yeah, you think of arthritis as something like oh well, you're stuck with it. Steady, steady, steady mm-hmm. over time. Yeah. What people don't realize about arthritis, it's you know they think of this dry image mm-hmm. of the X-ray where the doctor shows them, yeah, you're bone on bone, and then mm-hmm. of course everybody is bone on bone. So they tell us and yeah. they think they're the only one who's classified as bone on bone mm-hmm. as if the doctors that, that that you're the only one person that I've told all day long that is bone on bone. Yeah. They've told everybody is bone on bone. Right. So that's what, that's what happens. And so in reality, it's a living, breathing organism. Yes. It's filled with buffers and lubrication fluid and muscles pulling and torquing in different areas so that you have, um, Alignment is being corrected on a regular basis when we move, when we stretch, when we strengthen things and don't strengthen things. The muscles pull the joints into an alignment in such a way that's going to open up space or shrink space Mm -hmm. or create an alignment from the hip down to the knee, down to the foot. That's going to be more beneficial uh, for a person or it's going to cause pain and discomfort Mm -hmm. and cause repetitive, you know, wear and tear. But it's all about what what's happening 
outside of the joint as well. It's not just the joint itself, but what's happening around the joint. Yes. And what are the torques the that other, are being pulled on the joint? And yeah, that's bone where the, isn't the only thing. Bone it's, isn't the only thing. Yeah. That x-ray is just an x-ray. Yeah. Well, kind of like, you know, my back. Yes, I had a herniated right. disc, but it wasn't. That's really not what was causing all the pain. It was all the other stuff around it. The causes the, the movement. Was, yeah. Helped uh-huh. out by the degenerative. So the the lower the lowest part of the lumbar spine being fused on on the on the sacral part mm-hmm. but that was only a contributing factor right the cause was the posture the movement mm-hmm. yeah so my pain is so much more manageable um, I can do things that I never ever thought that I could do and my diagnosis hasn't changed right I still have disc degeneration right you know but you know, what has changed, my posture's changed, my flexibility has changed, my strength has changed, and my pain has significantly decreased. And you're probably, and from what I've heard, the people have known you a long time, you, you're young, you're younger now. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Compared to 10, yeah. or, even 10, 15 years ago. Yes. Right? I mean, and it shows up, uh, and going back to that ego, that so it's, it's, it's first like, you know, how you, um, the, going back to that patience that you have with yourself and then seeing those little changes, those, um, uh, functional changes. And then you uh, kind of just kind of a little, you know, cherry on the ice cream sundae. It's mm-hmm. just like, you start looking better too, you know? Oh, that, you're, yeah. Yeah. That you start, and then the healthier you get, the more you want to do, <laughs> like, you know, you want to get, um, healthier with like the food you're eating and stuff like that. And you want to, you know, drink more water and you just want to do healthier things. And so you start trying to Like I I feel this good. I can feel better. And then I can feel better. And then you look in the mirror and you're like, or you do a side by side and I'm like, man, I look good. (laughs) And then it's just like this confidence. Like I look, I look healthy. So it's not about being skinny. It's not about having like a yoga body or like, you know, the killer guns, even though I do have some guns, but you know, (laughs) it's not about, it's not about that. It's about looking and feeling healthy. Right. And it starts from a place of being comfortable doing yeah. something, mm-hmm. being empowered to doing something, getting the right coaching, the right mm-hmm. training in order to be able to do those things successfully. Yeah. You can do all the fillers and Botox that you want, but exercise and good nutrition is like the best like fountain mm-hmm. of youth. It's a lot better. <laughs> exercise is better than Botox. There's another good little, a little, um, slogan right there. All right. <laughs> So, and then you, you've, you also have uh, books that you've, that you've written. I do. I do. So Tell us um, about that. Yeah, I thought they would be prettier with um, colored pictures instead of those, you know, home exercise programs on um, like black and white and oh, stapled at the top. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got these little um, uh, bolster and strap stretch manuals. And this is me in the front. And so our um, friend, mine and my husband's friend, Carlos, did our pictures in the studio. And so I have, um, you know, the step-by-step instructions, what you do with the little yoga strap to improve your flexibility. And, um, so there's that. It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Um, but it's pretty comprehensive. So you get like front body stretch, you get back body stretch. And then the bolster, we see these in yoga classes, these, um, cool round like cylindrical things and people are like what do you do with that (laughs) (laughs) what do you do you do exactly like what you haven't been doing you know the whole day which is like you know sitting up with your spine up and you lean forward um stretching to the side um full extension over Mm. that and these are like bolster stretches are great like for the end of the day when you have been sitting or you've been driving for you know my friends who are still doing home health and are still in their cars on 635 Mm -hmm. (laughs) or hopefully not pulling over and crying over their trunk um but you know this is something that you can do at the end of the day where you can incorporate like breathing Um, exercises and even just like a really, really soft, gentle moving meditation type thing where you're just like laying over this, um, I'm going to put you through this so you can see it It feels really good. (laughs) How how can people get a hold of these books? Um, I have a website that you can order these books on and Mm -hmm. I can give you that information. Yeah. What's the website? Yeah. So it's uh, movementtherapydallas.com. And then, um, I'm actually going through, um, it's under construction. Might need to get with you on that one. (laughs) But um, there's going to be links for retail, like where you can get the straps, you can get the bolsters, and you can get the books. 
Excellent. So, yeah. And if in they're in, if they're in the DFW area, they want to reach out to you. Yeah. Uh, how else same can they get way, hold of there's, you? Um, same way through that website, and there's a link with my um, contact information, email address, and all that. Excellent. So. Can you say the one, uh, website one more time? It's movementtherapydallas.com. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jenny. We appreciate it. Thank you. And I would love to, um, you know, put you through these uh, little exercises. Okay. Let's, let's see <laughs> okay. what you can do with a, uh, with a meathead like me. <laughs> All right. We can do it. We can do it. All right. Yeah. Okay. So let's get your hamstrings. Okay. There. Going. Lay down your back. Okay. <laughs> So we'll have a little strap either side. Okay. And then let's uh, go with your uh, left leg. Let's start with your left. And just kind of wrap it around the ball mound of your foot. And so go ahead and bring it straight up. And then what I always tell people too, if they have um, you know tight hamstrings, it's totally fine. If you have a little you know a little micro bend in your knee, you can kind of avoid that hyperextension anyway. Because I do, you know, there are some people that have um, hyperextension in the knees, and then you lock that out. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get more flexibility from here at um, the heel, going all the way up to the top of the hamstring. The more that you bring it up on the ball of the foot, so mm -hmm. and then actively pull your toes towards your face. Mm -hmm. you relax. Yeah, and then you're going to I didn't stretch my calves before this. <laughs> oh, they're connected to the hamstrings. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's why I do my calf stretch yes. before my hamstring stretch. Okay. So long holds. So um, back in the day, we would do like these bouncy things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that just kind of activates the muscle. So we want the muscle to have time to lengthen, to relax. So the longer that you hold um, a static stretch like this, the more beneficial it is if you want to lengthen over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so then we're gonna pretend that you held it for thirty seconds, uh -huh. all right? And now let's go ahead. Um, the the heel connected to the hamstring. Hamstring is also um, kind of attached to this uh, lovely thing called the IT band. Mm -hmm. that probably gets tight too, huh? Because it might be. Yes, and they've taken my foam roller away at the gym. <sighs> Did you overdo it? No, because of COVID. <laughs> oh, because of COVID. See, they okay. make up stuff. Yeah, you get, you get, get your own foam roller <laughs> and buy my equipment. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's get your get to your IT band. So straighten this leg out. And now hold right here. Uh -huh. Now hold that side of the strap with this both one? hand, or with both sides of the strap with that right hand. And now let's take it over. Sure. Uh -huh. And then we're going to breathe, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that belly breathing. Inhale. And exhale and then see if you can take it over more and so you can get into different angles um, of the hamstring you can also get into different angles of this outer hip by um, bringing your leg up a little bit closer to you down a little bit over and even turning your toes this oh, yeah. oh yeah so it's crazy like you know and that's that's where I get to nerd out a little bit. Like, oh, I'm going to turn my foot in this way, or I'm going to torture Jeffrey again and turn him this way. Yeah. But he's still breathing, right? Still breathing. <laughs> yeah. So he's going to hold that for 30 lovely seconds. It's a long 30 it's seconds. It's a long 30 seconds. But then after that's done, <laughs> then you're going to catch both sides of the strap with your other hand. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to work that inner thigh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. So we're going to take that. Theoretically, it would be better. Yes. So, chair's kind of in the way. Chair's in the way. Should I move this slightly? Here we go. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. And then same thing. So, relax your head. Relax. See, this is the this is the gym guy in him right here. It's like, oh, oh yeah. I can muscle through this. I can, I can power through, through it. Yeah. This is just like my trainers. They you know, know who you are. <laughs> the mentality never, we never change. <laughs> yeah. We never change. Like, I can power through this. You can't power through a stretch. <laughs> power through anything in life. <laughs> And then again, you can kind of like bring it up, you can get it closer to your shoulder. So just kind of working that whole hamstring hip complex. This oh. is a really, really good um, thing to do. And then go back through it, you know, hamstring again. Uh, and I don't really tell people there's like a hard and fast, you know, rule. Do I have to hold this for, um, I say longer, better. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, 30 seconds. It doesn't have, you don't have to do it five repetitions. Just Listen to your body. If you feel like you need a little bit more on one side, do a little bit more on the other side. And um, But always do both sides. Keep it symmetrical. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and try some of this, um, this work with the bolster. So this I love for end of the day. So Jeffrey was talking about um, earlier in our interview that 
we are like this. You yes. Over our devices, we're like this, which puts pressure on the shoulders. We're like this. So what the bolster will help you do is to counter that posture. So you're going to have your hips here, mm -hmm. and then you're just simply going to lay back here. over that. Like this? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And then you're just going to open your arms out okay. so that instead of rounding forward like we do all day, they're rotated back, and then you just breathe. And so this is nice. nice. It's comfortable. It's so nice. I usually use a foam roller, mm -hmm. but that's not a foam roller is often too hard for a lot of people. Yeah, it's exactly. not comfortable for a lot of people. Right. So, so this, this is a nice alternative. Yes, it's a very nice alternative because you should be able to like lay here for five minutes, maybe mm. ten minutes, especially for people who are are driving or in front of the computer all day long. The longer, the better. And then this is also good to get that natural extension back into your low spine. And so you can keep your knees up. So if it were me, this would have been, um, you know, 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, me. Uh, I would have had to keep my knees bent. Um, but eventually, you, know, you can start taking your legs, extend them a little bit more. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. And then, oh, okay. you get, then you get opening through, you know, the lower part of your abdominals. Mm -hmm. You get a little opening through your hip flexors, too. So that's actually... That's really nice. And then we can also stretch the side of the body. I mean, how many? How often do we do this during the day, normal people? Yoga normal teachers, day. yes. <laughs> Yoga people, always. We always all do that, but you, most people do not do that. So, so we can, here? yeah. So you can roll it like this, and then take that right. Here. Uh huh. And then here. Rib cage, and then yep, and then extend over, and then just hold, and then you can again find some movement. Um, you know, what I like to tell people is move in some of these postures. Move like water. We're mostly water anyway. So, like, take that shoulder back and take it, you know, take it forward. And then you can see he's got this lovely rotation through the spine. He's opening up through the rib cage. This is also going to help people that have um, breathing difficulties. It's going to create a little, a much more space through the trunk and through the ribs so that, you know, you can breathe better. It's a lot easier to breathe here when you're open than... It's hard, like, you know, try kind of hunching over and trying to get a deep breath. You can't, you know, so breathing in those movements, so on both sides. So those are just um, some examples of things that you can do with the props. And very easy, sometimes the easiest exercises or um, the easiest postures are the most beneficial. It doesn't have to be, you know, anything crazy and complicated. That's great. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jane. That was All not right. as painful as it could have been, so right. thank you. Well, yeah. <laughs> Schedule with me, and you'll see. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, that's all I'm done, so. Totally kidding. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. All right.